गुड इवनिंग ऑल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट पोस्ट पैथोजन इंट्रैक्शन इम्यूनोलॉजी एडेप्टिव इम्यूनिटी एंड एंटीबॉडी सो यू ऑल नो दैट एंटीबॉडी इज पार्ट ऑफ एडेप्टिव इम्यूनिटी वी हैव ऑलरेडी टॉक्ड अबाउट इन नेट इम्यूनिटी सो वेर वॉट हैपन्स इन आवर बॉडी द इम्यून सेल्स विच आर पार्ट ऑफ इन नेट इम्यूनिटी एक्स अपॉन बट also when we grow up we also face different kinds of uh, substances which are which are pathogens and against it we generate adaptive immunity so antibody is part of adaptive immunity now we have already heard that the b cell produces different uh, b cells produces antibodies so an antibody is um, so uh, obviously it's a protein and it's made up of two chains kb chains and light chains so in the light chain you can see the structure of light chain and heavy chain so here we in the previous class we already discussed about heavy chain so today we will discuss about light chain so when uh, so in the this is this is heavy chain and this is light chain so in this heavy chain or light chain you can see this is the antigen binding domain and in this constant domain it has effector activity okay when amino acid of light chains were sequenced a pattern emerged amino terminal end that is 100 110 amino acid varied other part remain constant were found to be either kappa or lambda in human 60% is kappa and 40% is lambda in mouse 95% is kappa and 5% is lambda heavy chains amino terminal end end also shows variability five different heavy chain constant regions is called isotypes igm also called mu igg also called gamma iga also called alpha igd this delta and ig is epsilon some sub isotypes have been discovered in some species each antibody has two identical heavy chains and two identical light chains if you have any question please let me know so each antibody has two identical heavy chains and two identical light chains chain composition of the five immunoglobulin globulin classes in humans class igg heavy chain is called gamma subclasses gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma 3 gamma 4 light chain kappa or lambda molecular formula gamma 2 kappa 2 gamma 2 lambda 2 so igm heavy chain mu sub classes none light chain kappa or lambda mu to k to um, n and mu to lambda to n n equals to 1 to 5 so it can be pentamedic
IgA, heavy chain alpha, subclasses alpha 1, alpha 2, light chain, kappa or lambda. Molecular formula alpha 2, kappa 2, n, alpha 2, lambda 2, n. IgE, epsilon, subclasses none, light chain, kappa or lambda, epsilon 2, kappa 2, epsilon 2, lambda 2. IgD, delta, subclasses none, light chain, kappa or lambda, delta 2, kappa 2. So, gamma, delta, alpha. Uh, so, hence antigen binding site is there and biological activity uh, is there in the constant region. In the region, gamma, delta and alpha heavy chains have extended peptide sequence, rich in proline and cystin, gives flexibility, CH2 and CH3 contains oligosaccharide side chain. Mu and epsilon, present in secreted immunoglobin and membrane bound immunoglobin, no hinge region is there. So, additional domain is there which is CH2. Immunoglobulins can be secreted or membrane bound. Membrane bound uh, differ in the fibrocin ter terminal end. Extracellular spacer of 26 amino acids is there. Hydrophobic transmembrane sequence and cytoplasmic tear. So, this is IgG variable light chain, constant light chain, variable heavy chain, constant heavy chain. This hinge region is present in IgG. Mm, in IgD, you can see um, the kind of similar IgE, IgA, which can be dimerized. It has GHN also, which helps in solubility. IgM can be pentameric and IgM are pentameric. So, in you can see tisaglar bonds are present in between two, in between five uh, monomers, and one G chain is present. IgM pentamer, <coughs> monomeric IgM expressed on B cells and its secreted uh, form is pentameric. First class produced in memory response, activates complement, very good at agglutination, 5 to 10 percent of total serum I, I, immunoglobin. IgD, membrane bound on B cells. IgG, most abundant, 4 human subclasses, crosses placenta, involved in complement, 80 percent of total immunoglobin. IgG1, disulfide bond is there, IgG2, um, IgG3, IgG4, IgGA, IgA, so it's dimer, it has a J chain, predominant class in secretions, exists as dimer, can cross-link large antigens, daily production is maximum among other uh, isotypes, 5 gram to 15 gram, present in mucosa. Structure of a secretory IgA. Uh, J chain, so uh, so the J chain uh, is a basically a secretory product, a secretory compound. So it helps in transportation of immunoglobin A. Mm, so what happens after producing from uh, plasma cells dimeric IgA? So it gets bound with a poly Ig receptor and this can engulf in in a vesicle. And after enzymatic cleavage, it it secretes as a secretory IgA. IgE involved in allergic reactions, involvement in parasitic infections as well. So here uh, the property and activity of different IgGs, uh, IgEs are uh, you know listed and also along with their molecular weight. So once again I would like to introduce myself, I'm Ananya, I'm teaching for the course host pathogen interaction. Um, our uh, supervisor, the supervisor of the course is Professor Himoshi Kumar. If you have any doubt, you can reach uh, to us with uh, with any of your doubts. Dilemma: Since only thirty one to thirty five thousand genes in the human genome actually encode proteins, how antibody diversity between one million to hundred million specificities achieved? With such a limited number of genes, what causes the difference in amino acid sequences? How can different heavy chain constant regions can be associated uh, with the variable regions? Genome in mature B cells is not some uh, same as other host cells. So, in germline DNA, multiple gene segments coat portions of single mm, immunoglobin heavy or light chain. During B cell maturations and stimulations, gene segments are shuffled, leaving coding sequence for only one functional heavy chain and light chain. Chromosomal DNA in mature B cells is not the same as germline DNA. 
key contributor in this field is S. Tonegawa. So Tonegawa's experiment in immunoglobin genes rearranged. So we'll talk about Tonegawa's experiment uh, in immunoglobin genes rearranged and how this uh, immunoglobin gene gets rearranged and then forms this um, um, antibodies. So we'll talk about it. Before that, if you have any doubt, let me know. So, there are germline genes where you can see Vn, V2, V1, J, C and so on and there are different sites of restriction enzyme digestion, okay. So, how does, uh, how this rearrange happens, you can see some portions gets deleted and rearranged and can form this kind of genes like Vn means any number of V. So, V2, V1 and then V1 gets, uh, you know, get linked with J and like that. <coughs> so there can be different experimental basis for diagnosis of <coughs> rearrangements at an immunoglobin locus. This is cell IgG expressed. So this is uh, hematopoietic stem cells and here you can see from hematopoietic stem cells limper cell is generated then pro B cell uh, with the help of partial hydrogen gene rearrangement pro B cell to free B cell complete hydrogen gene rearrangement free B cell to immature basal light chain gene rearrangement immature to mature basal here change in RNA processing happens mature basal to activated basal it uh, stimulates antigen and then uh, differentiation where IgM secreting plasma cells and class switching happens where memory basals and then different plasma cells secreting various isotypes uh, gets uh, developed so this uh, until this process it happens in bone marrow and from there it happens in peripheral lymphoid organs so kappa and lambda light chain segments l leader peptide guides through ear V and J and C, C is a constant region, VJ segment codes for variable region, KB chain, L, V, D, J, C, V, D, J segment codes for variable region. So genetic organization of immunoglobulin uh, globulin germline gene segments, lambda chain DNA, is kappa chain DNA, heavy chain DNA. So
so there are different chains and here you can see different uh, like uh, gene segments and this uh, gets rearranged and then form the, the different isotypes or different subtypes variable region gene rearrangements variable region gene rearrangements occur during b cell maturation in bone marrow heavy chain variable region genes rearrange first then light chain variable region in the end b cell contains single functional variable region dna sequence heavy chain rearrangement happens after stimulation of b cell so this is heavy chain rearrangement i will discuss uh, the heavy chain and light chain rearrangement in detail in some time this is light chain rearrangement okay Generation of antibody diversity. Multiple germline gene segments are there. Combinatorial VDJ joining by VDJ recombinase. Recombination activating genes 1 and 2 and terminal deoxynucleotide transferase. Junctional flexibility. P region nucleotide addition via recombination of signal sequence. N region nucleotide <coughs> addition via recombination signal sequence. Somatic hypermutation. Combinatorial association of uh, light and heavy genes. Ensuring only one chromosome expresses the antibody genes allele, allele exclusion that the rearranged heavy and light chain genes from only one chromosome are exposed, expressed. Model to account for allele ex exclusion. This is junctional flexibility in joining, class switching. Switch region, switch recombinant, switch factor, activation induced cytidine DI minus antibody diversity, multiple gene line segments and combination of those segments, mechanism of variable region DNA rearrangements.
so as we were we were discussing about antibodies so i would like to follow uh, this textbook kuvi immunology as well so here you can see this is the example of igm so antibodies are the antigen binding proteins you know and those are present on the b cell membranes antibodies are present on the b cell membrane and secreted by plasma cells we have discussed this so far <coughs> so membrane bound bound antibody confers antigenic specificity on b cells antigen specific proliferation of b cell clones is elicited by the interaction of membrane antibody with antigen so secreted antibodies circulate in the blood where they serve as the effectors of humoral immunity by searching out and neutralizing antigens or marking them for elimination so all antibodies share structural features bind to antigen and participate in a limited number of um, effector functions the antibodies present produced in response to a particular uh, antigens are heterologous most antigens are complex and contain many different antigenic determinants and the immune system usually responds by producing antibodies to several anti epitopes on the antigen this response requires the recruitment of several clones of b cells their outputs are monoclonal antibodies each of which specifically binds to a specific or single antigenic determinant together this monoclonal antibodies make up the polyclonal and heterogeneous serum antibody response to an immunoza- immunizing antigen so so we'll discuss about basic structure of antibodies if you have any doubt you can let me know so basic structure of antibodies <coughs> blood can be separated in a centrifuge um, into a fluid and a cellular fraction the fluid fraction is a plasma and the cellular fraction contains red blood cells leukocytes platelets 
Plasma contains all of the soluble small molecules and macromolecules of blood, including fibrin and other proteins required for the formation of blood clots. If the blood or plasma is allowed to clot, the fluid phase that remains is called serum. It has been known since the turn of the century that antibodies reside in the serum. The first evidence that antibodies were contained in particular serum protein fractions came from a classic experiment by A. Tessilis and covered the immunized uh, rabbits with a protein of ovalumin and then divided the immunized rabbit serum into two aliquots. Electrophoresis of one serum aliquot revealed four peaks corresponding to al albumin and the alpha, beta and gamma globulins. The other serum aliquot was reacted with ovalumin and the precipitate that formed was um, removed. The remaining serum proteins which did not react with the antigens were then electrophorous. A comparison of the electrophoretic profiles of these two serum aliquots revealed that there was a significant drop in the gamma, um, gamma globulin peak in the aliquot that had been reacted with antigen. Thus, the gamma, gamma globulin fraction was identified as containing serum antibodies which are called immunoglobulins. To distinguish them from any other proteins that might uh, be contained in the gamma globulin fraction, the early experiments of Carbert and Tessilis resolved serum proteins into the into three major uh, non-albumin peaks, alpha, beta and gamma. We now know that the, although immunoglobulin G and the main class of antibody molecules is indeed mostly found in the gamma globulin fraction. Antibodies are heterodimers, so antibody molecules have a common structure of four peptide chains. This structure consists of two identical light chains, polypeptides of uh, around 25 kilo molecular weight and two identical heavy chains. Larger polypeptides of molecular weight 50,000 or more. Like the antibody molecules they constitute, H and L chains are also called immunoglobulins. Each light chain is bound to heavy chains by a disulfur bond and by such non-covalent interactions as salt linkage, uh, hydrogen bonds and hydrophobic bonds to form a heterodimer. Similar non-covalent interactions and disulfate uh, bridges link the two identical heavy and light chain combinations to each other to form the basic four chain antibody structure, a dimer of dimers. As we shall see, the exact number and precise positions of these interchain disulfate bonds differ among um, antibody classes and subclasses. The first uh, 110 or so amino acids of the amino terminal region of a light or heavy chain varies greatly among antibodies of different specificity. These segments of highly variable sequences are called V regions, VL um, in light chains and VH in heavy. All of the differences in specificity uh, displayed by different antibodies can be stressed, uh, stressed to differences in the amino acid sequences of V region. In fact, uh, most of the differences among uh, antibodies fall within area of V region called complementary determining regions. And in this series of bo on both light and heavy chains that constitute the um, antigen binding site of the antibody molecule by contrast within the same antibody class far fewer differences are seen when one um, compares sequences throughout the rest of the molecule. The regions of relatively constant sequence beyond the variable regions have been dubbed C region CL on the light chain, CH on the heavy chain. Antibodies are glycoproteins with few exceptions. The sites of attachment for carbohydrates are restricted to the constant region. We do not completely understand the role played by glycosylation of antibodies, but it probably increases the solubility of molecules. Inappropriate glycosylation or its absence affects the rate at which antibodies are cleared from the serum and decreases the efficiency of interaction between antibody and the complement system and between antibodies and X receptor. So chemical and enzymatic methods reveal basic antibody structure. Our knowledge of basic antibody structure was derived from a from a variety of experimental observations when the gamma globulin fraction of serum is uh, you know separated into high and more low molecular weight fractions antibodies of around 1,50,000 molecular weight designated as immunoglobin G are found in the low molecular weight fraction in a key experiment brief uh, digestion of IgG with the enzyme papain produced three fragments two of which were identical fractions and a Third, that was uh, different, the two identical fragments each, of, each with a molecular weight 45,000 had a antigen binding affinity. 
so here you can see the disulfide bond between two heavy chains and between two heavy chains are light chain and we have talked about this so we if you have any doubt you can let me know we have already covered this we will now uh, discuss about obstacles to antibody sequencing So we will talk about obstacles to antibody sequencing. Initial attempts uh, to determine the amino acid sequence of the heavy and light chains of antibody were hindered because insufficient amount of homogeneous protein were available. Although the basic structure and chemical properties of different antibodies are similar, their antigen binding specificities and therefore their exact uh, amino acid sequences are very different. The populations of antibodies in this serum gamma globulin fraction consist of the heterogeneous spectrum of antibodies. Even if immunization is done with a hapten carrier conjugate, the antibodies formed just to the hapten alone are heterogeneous. They recognize different epitopes of the hapten and have different binding affinities. This heterogeneity of serum antibodies made them unsuitable for sequencing strategies. Pure immunoglobin obtained from multiple myeloma patients made. Uh, <coughs> 
sequencing possible. Sequencing analysis finally becomes visible with the discovery of multiple myeloma, a cancer of antibody producing plasma cells. The plasma cells in a normal individual are um, end state cells that secrete a sing single molecular species of antibody for a limited period of time and then die. In contrast, a clone of plasma cells is uh, in an individual with uh, multiple myeloma has escaped normal controls on their lifespan and proliferations are not end stage cells, rather they divide over and over in an upregulated way without requiring any activation by antigen to induce proliferation. Although such a cancerous plasma cell called a myeloma cells has been transformed, its protein synthesizing machinery and secretory functions are not altered, thus the cell continues to secrete molecular homogeneous antibody. This antibody is indistinguishable from normal antibody molecules but is called myeloma protein to denote the source. In a patient uh, afflicted with multiple myeloma, myeloma protein can account for 95% of the serum immunoglobin. In most patients, the myeloma cells also secrete excessive amounts of lichens. This excess lichens were first discovered in the urine of myeloma patients and were named Bain's proteins for their discoverer. Multiple myeloma also occurs uh, in the animals. In mice, it uh, can arise spontaneously as it does in humans. All conditions uh, favoring myeloma induction can be created by injecting mineral oil into the peritoneal cavity. The clones of malignant plasma cells that develop are called plasmo plasma cytomas and many of these are designated as MFPCs, denoting the mineral oil induction of plasma cytoma cells. A large number of mouse uh, MOPC uh, lines secreting different um, immunoglobulins classes are presently carried by the American type uh, culture collections and the non profit repository of cell lines uh, commonly used in research. Light chain sequencing revealed that immunoglobulins have constant and variable regions. When the amino acid sequences of several Benz Jones uh, proteins from different individuals were compared, a striking pattern emerged. The amino terminal half of the chain, consisting of 100 to 110 amino acids, was found to vary among different Benz Jones proteins. This region was called variable region. The carboxyl terminal half of the molecule, called the constant region, had two basic amino acid sequences. This led to the recognition that there were two um, light chain types, kappa and lambda. In humans, 65 60% of the light chains are kappa and 40% are lambda. Now, whereas in mice, 95% of the light chains are kappa and only 5% are lambda, a single antibody molecule contains only one light chain type, either kappa or lambda, never both. The amino acid sequences of light uh, of lambda light chains show minor differences that are used to classify lambda light chains into subtypes. In mice, there are three subtypes, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. In humans, there are four subtypes. So, heavy gen sequencing revealed five basic varieties of heavy gens. For heavy gen sequencing studies, myeloma proteins were reduced to its markup to ethanol and alkylated, and the heavy gens were separated by gel filtration in a denaturing solvent. When the amino acid sequences of several myeloma protein heavy gens were compared, a pattern similar to that of light chains emerged. The amino terminal part of the chain consisting of 100 to 110 amino acids showed great sequence uh, variation among myeloma heavy chains and was therefore called variable region. The remaining part of the protein uh, revealed five uh, basic sequence patterns corresponding to five different uh, heavy chain constant regions. Each of these uh, five different heavy chains is called isotype. The length of the constant region is approximately 330 amino acids of delta, gamma and lambda and 440 amino acids of mu and epsilon. The heavy chains of the given antibody molecule determine the class of that antibody IgM mu, IgG gamma, IgG alpha, IgG delta, IgG epsilon. Each class can have either kappa or lambda light chains. A single antibody molecule has two identical heavy chains and two uh, identical light chains. Mm, so minor differences in the amino acid uh, sequence of the alpha and gamma heavy gens led to the further classification of the heavy gens into subtypes that determine the subclass of antibody molecules they, they constitute. In humans, there are two subtypes of uh, alpha uh, heavy gens, alpha and alpha 2, and for uh, four subtypes of gamma heavy gens. Immunoglobin fine structure. The structure of the immunoglobin molecule is determined by the primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary organization of the protein. The primary structure, the amino acid sequence, accounts for the variable and constant regions of the heavy and light chains. The secondary structure is formed by folding of extended polypeptide chain. 
back and forth so class igg uh, heavy chain subclass light chain molecular formula and so on so uh, the chains that then uh, folded into a tertiary uh, structure of compact globular um, uh, domains which are connected to neighboring um, uh, domains by uh, continuations of the polypeptide chain that lie outside uh, the beta pleated sheet finally the globular um, uh, domains of adjacent heavy and light uh, polypeptide chains interact in the quaternary structure forming functional domains that enable the molecule to specifically bind antigen and at the same time perform a number of biological effects function and also do you know that immunoglobulin causes multiple uh, domains based on the immunoglobulin fold We have covered this. We will talk about the immunoglobulin superfamily. If you have any doubt, we can discuss.
so the immunoglobin super family the structures of the various immunoglobin globulin heavy and light chains described earlier share several features suggesting that they have a common evolutionary ancestry in particular all heavy and light chains classes have the immunoglobulin fold domain structure the presence of this structure characteristic structure in all immunoglobulin heavy and light chains suggests that the genes encoding them arose from a common pre primordial gene in encoding a polypeptide of around 110 amino acids gene duplications and later divisions could then have generated the various heavy and light chain genes large number of permanent proteins have been shown to possess one or more regions homologous to an immunoglobulin domain each of these membrane proteins is classified as a member of immunoglobulin superfamily the term superfamily is used to denote proteins whose corresponding genes derive from a common primordial gene encoding the basic domain structure these genes have uh, evolved independently and do not share genetic linkage or function the following proteins in addition to the immunoglobulin themselves are representative members of the immunoglobulin superfamily igg alpha and beta um, heterodimer part of the b cell receptor poly igg receptor which contributes the secretory component uh, to secretory ig and igm T cell receptor, T cell accessory proteins including CD2, CD4, CD8, CD28, class 1 and class 2 MSC molecules, beta 2 microglobulin and invariant protein associated with class 1 MSC molecule, various cell addition molecules including BCAM1, ICAM1, ICAM2, platelet derived growth factors. Numerous other proteins, some of them discussed in other chapters, also belong to the immunoglobulin superfamily. X ray crystallographic analysis has not been uh, accomplished for all members of the immunoglobulin superfamily nevertheless the primary amino acid uh, sequence of this uh, protein suggests that they all contain the typical immunoglobulin fold uh, domain specifically all members of the immunoglobulin superfamily contain at least one or more stretches of about 110 amino acids capable of arrangement into pleated sheets of anti-parallel beta sheets usually with an invariant intra Gendacellate bond that closes or loops spanning 50 to 70 residues. You can see here. So these are some members of the immunoglobulin superfamily, a group of structural related, usually membrane bound glycoprotein. In all cases shown here, except beta 2 microglobulin. The carboxyl uh, terminal end of the molecule anchored in the protein. So, monoclonal antibodies, as noted in chapter 3, most antigens offer multiple epitopes and therefore induce proliferation and differentiation of a variety of B cell clones, each derived from a B cell that recognizes a particular epitope. The resulting serum antibodies are heterogeneous, comprising a mixture of antibodies, each specific for one epitope. Such a uh, polyclonal uh, antibody response facilitated the localization phagocytosis and complement mediated lysis of antigen it thus has clear advantage for organisms in vivo unfortunately the antibody heterogeneity in that increases immune protection in vivo often uh, reduces the efficacy of an antiserum for various uh, in vitro uses for most research diagnostic and therapeutic purposes monoclonal antibodies derived uh, from a single clone and thus uh, specific for a single epitope are preferable. Direct biochemical purification of a monoclonal antibody from a polyclonal antibody preparation is not feasible. In 1975, George Kohler and Kessel Meinstein devised a method for preparing monoclonal antibody which quickly became one of the immunology's key technologies by fusing a normal activating uh, antibody producing B cell with a myeloma cell. They were able to generate a hybrid cells called hybridoma that possessed uh, the immortal go growth properties of the myeloma cells and secreted the antibody produced by the B cell. These are antigen uh, with different epitopes, isolated spleen cells, so the plasma cells, the myeloma cells, hybridized hybridomas, select, so isolate serum, antibody 1, 2, 3, 4, monoclonal antibodies have uh, important clinical uses.
so this is the now important part the organization and expression of immunoglobulin genes So as we were talking about organization and expression of immunoglobulin genes. So here you can see 5 prime to 3 prime genome, every BK, JK, CK, polyadenylation or RNA splicing will lead to LVJCK. So one of the most remarkable features of the vertebrate immune system is its ability to respond to an apparently limitless array of foreign antigens as immunoglobulin sequence data accumulated virtually every antibody molecule studied 
was found to contain a unique amino acid sequence in its variable region but only one of a limited number of invariant sequences in its constant region the genetic basis for this combination of constancy um, and tremendous variation in a single protein molecule lies in the organization of the immunoglobulin genes in germline dna multiple gene segments encode portions of a single immunoglobulin heavy or light genes these gene segments are carried in a germ cells but cannot be transcribed and translated into complete genes until they are rearranged into functional genes during recent maturations in the bone marrow certain of these gene segments are randomly shuffled by a dynamic genetic system capable of generating more than 10 to the power 6 combinations subsequent processes increases the diversity of the repertoire of antibody binding sites to a very large number that exceeds 10 to the 6 by that at least 2 to 3 orders of magnitude the process of b cell development are carefully regulated the maturation of a progenitor b cell pro- progresses through a ordered sequence of igg gene rearrangement coupled with modifications to the gene that contribute to the diversity of the final product by the end of this process a matured immunocompetent b cell will contain coding sequences for one functional uh, heavy gene variable region and one light gene variable region the individual b cell is thus antigenetically committed to a specific epitope after antigenic stimulation of a mature b cell in peripheral lymph node organs the processes of b cell development are carefully regulated the maturation of a progenitor b cell processes through an ordered sequence so um, you can see that individual <coughs> b cell is thus ant- antigenically committed to a specific epitope after antigenic stimulation of a mature b cell in peripheral lymph node organs further rearrangement of constant region gene segments can generate changes uh, in the isotype expressed which produce changes in the biological effector functions of the immunoglobulin molecule without changing its specificity thus mature b cells contain chromosomal dna that that is no longer identical to germline dna while we think of genomic dna as a stable genetic blueprint the lymphocytic gene uh, lineage does not retain an intact copy of this blueprint Genomic rearrangement is an essential feature of lymphocytic differentiation and no other vertebrate cell type has been shown to undergo this process. This chapter first describes the detailed organization of the immunoglobulin genes, the process of immunoglobulin gene rearrangement and the mechanisms by which the dynamic immunoglobulin genetic system generates more than 10 to the power 8 different antigenic specifications. so this is overview of b cell development the events that occur during maturations in the bone marrow do not require antigen whereas activation and differentiation of mature b cell in peripheral lymph node organs require antigen the levels m uh, igm and m igd refer to membrane associated igg's genetic model compatible to ig structure the results of the immunoglobulin sequencing studies described in chapter 4 reveal the number of feature of immunoglobulin structures that were difficult to reconcile with classic genetic models any viable model of the immunoglobulin genes mm, had to account for the following properties of antibodies the worst diversity of antibody specificity is the presence in immunoglobulin heavy and light genes of a variable region at the amino terminal end and a constant region at the carboxyl terminal end the existence of isotype with the same antigenic specificity which results from the association of a given variable region with different heavy gen constant region 
germline and somatic variation models contended uh, to explain antibody diversity.
so as we were discussing about uh, tony gower's bombshell uh, immunoglobin gene rearrangement so in 1976 s tony gower and um, n hausomi found the first direct evidence that um, separate genes encode the v and c regions of immunoglobulins and uh, that the genes are rearranged in the course of b cell differentiation this work changed the field of immunology in 1987 tony gower was awarded the nobel prize for this work selecting dna from embryonic cells and adult myeloma cells cells at widely different stages of development uh, the fragments were then uh, separated by size and analyzed for their ability to hybridize with a radio labeled mrna probe two separate restriction fragments from the embryonic dna hybridized with the mrna whereas only a single restriction fragment of the adult myeloma dna hybridized with the same probes so the pioneering experiments of Tonegawa and Hazumi employed a tedious and time-consuming procedure that has since been replaced by the much more powerful approach of certain blot analysis. This method now universally used to investigate the rearrangement of immunoglobulin genes. So, which eliminates the need to elude the separate uh, elude the separated DNA restriction fragments from gel slices prior to analysis by hybridization with an immunoglobulin gene segment. So, this is germline. This is rearranged. So, experimental basis for diagnosis of rearrangement at, at an immunoglobulin locus. The number and size of restriction fragments generated by the treatment of DNA with a uh, restriction enzyme is determined by the sequence of the DNA. The digestion of rearranged DNA with a restriction enzyme yields a pattern of uh, restriction fragments that differ from those obtained by digestion of an un unrearranged locus with the same RD. Typically, the fragments are an analyzed by the techniques of sudden blotting. In this example, a probe that includes a J gene segment is used to identify the RD digestion fragments that include all or portions of the segment as shown. Rearrangements results in the deletion of a segment. Mm, it also results in the joining of gene segments. In this case, a V and J segment that are separated in the germline. Consequently, fragments dependent on the presence of the, mm, of the segments for their generation are absent from the restriction enzyme digest of dna from the rearranged locus furthermore rearranged dna gives rise to novel uh, fragments that are absent from digest of dna in the germline configuration this can be useful because both b cells and non b cells have two immunoglobulins on loci mm, multi-gene organization of igg genes as cloning and sequencing of the light and heavy chain dna was accomplished even greater complexity was revealed than uh, had been predicted by Dreyer and Bennett, the kappa and lambda light chains and heavy chains are encoded by separate multigen families situated on different chromosomes. In germline DNA, each of these multigen families contain several coding sequences called gene segments separated by non-coding regions. During B cell maturation, these gene segments are rearranged and brought together to form functional immunoglobulin genes. Each multigen family has distinct features. The kappa and lambda light gene family contain VG and CG segments. The rearranged VG segments encode the variable region of the light chains. The heavy gene um, uh, family contains V, D, J, and C gene segments. The rearranged VDJ gene segment encode the variable region of the heavy chain. In each gene family, C gene <coughs> gene segments encode the constant regions. Each VG gene segment is preceded at its 5' prime end by a small exon that encodes a short uh, signal or leader peptide. Lambda chain multigen family.
so this is organization of immunoglobulin germline gene segments in the mouse lambda light chain uh, kappa light chain heavy chain lambda and kappa light chains are encoded by vj and c gene segment the heavy chain is encoded by vdj uh, and c gene segment this is um, kappa light chain gene uh, rearrangement and rna processing events required to generate a kappa light chain protein in this example we are using joints vk 2 3 and jk 4 Yeah. <laughs> 